Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Old Car Guy. Today, I'm going to be taking you underneath the new Grand Marquis, which does have a name by the way, and we're going to show you all the things that's wrong and all the things that we need to repair right away, and some things that we're going to be doing along the way. So stay tuned and follow along. Before we get into this video guys, as you all know, I am chasing 5,000 subscribers. We're almost there. I've been giving you guys daily updates on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, Old Car Guy is where you can go over there and follow me for some in-depth pictures, behind the scenes and all that stuff. We're chasing 5,000 subscribers. If you guys could give this video a subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below, tell me how I'm doing because without your guys' views, I'm not going to get there. And if you guys are subscribed, you'll get every video that I put out on Tuesdays and Fridays. So guys, it's no big secret that we've got this new Grand Marquis, this 2003 and a half, apparently, that I've been corrected in the comments from my last video, that we've got this thing and we didn't have a name for it for the first couple of episodes, but I did a couple of rounds of uh, names that you guys have given me based on comments in the comment sections on my video. And we did that in three rounds. So we took eight names that you guys had given us and we put those into the first two rounds and then we took the top two of each of those rounds and put them into a third round, blah, blah, blah. We've got a name for this Grand Marquis. Overwhelmingly, with over 130 votes altogether, you guys have named this car Blackjack. So you're gonna hear me call this car Blackjack. You're gonna hear me call it Jack. I'm not sure how far we're going to go with that, but nevertheless, Old Blackjack is getting the once over today and you guys are coming along. So let's take a look. So as you can see, we do have the wheels off. They are sitting down here. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you guys. Uh, based on our experience with selling used cars, we're going to take a look at some of the things that we go over on our used cars, which I'm going to do with this one as well, that some of you may not be aware. First thing I want to point out, if you look at the back of this rotor here, it is quite rusty on this surface. It's a steel rotor. These aluminum wheels, obviously being aluminum, will tend to stick to the rotors on a car because aluminum and steel don't mix. They'll corrode together and they'll bind together with that corrosion. So if you look in here and you see all this brown buildup, this is a great reason, and this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys why wheels and lug nuts seem like they're on too tight. Simply because what happens is, if this is a clean surface and you've got brand new rotors in your car, over time, that surface will start to corrode because aluminum and steel don't mix. So what happens is all this buildup gets in there and it starts pushing ever so slightly this rim away from the mating surface because of the corrosion. So seemingly making it feel like those lug nuts are on too tight. And the first thing that people want to do is blame the last garage that had them on there. Well, one of the things that we do is we'll clean this surface here so that it's a fresh surface before we put it back onto the new rotor. Simply because we want that surface to be level and we don't want you having a problem with the wheel coming loose because if you don't clean it and you put that surface, uh, you put those two surfaces together, you have an irregular surface and then the lug nuts tend to back off. Therefore, your wheel passes you down the road. So that's one of the things that we do is we will clean those surfaces. I've gone all over this car and I want to point out a few things that you guys should be aware of as well. So, but before we do that, let's go underneath and I'm gonna show you some of the things underneath of this car. So first things first, we've got a pretty good oil leak up here. We're trying to figure out where it comes from. I've cleaned it or I've sprayed it down with some brake cleaner. Uh, is it uh, power steering fluid? Is it oil? We don't know. Is it transmission line? I don't know. We're gonna clean that up. We're gonna start the car and see if anything gets wet real quick. As we come back here, you'll see that the, um, Base pan is wet a little bit and I went around and tightened up some of those bolts that hold the base pan on. Some of them I got to turn on. I'm not sure if that's what it was or not. Nevertheless, hopefully that's all that is. It's just a little bit of weepage uh, coming out of that as well. 
Some of you have asked me about the exhaust and dual exhaust, and as you can see, we've got ourselves an X pipe built in here, and someone along the way has cut out the rear cats. We've got one set here on either side, and this is where your other cat should be. They're gone. Unlike grandma, which are hollowed out, this is just a straight pipe, comes back into an X pipe, and we've got some new exhaust coming all the way back into brand new mufflers. And according to the previous owner that I bought it from, he had to put these mufflers on to get it to pass inspection. As we come back here, this car is sway bar equipped. Grandma is not. This is just a tiny sway bar. I think they're what, 15 or 17 millimeter. And uh, we're gonna be looking at possibly upgrading that at some point along with the rear diff. Again, you guys were asking me if this rear diff was a track lock, it is not. And we're gonna prove that to you with a little burnout at the end of this video, so stay tuned. As we come back here, we've got some uh, tips, what some people like to call marauder tips sticking out the back. I really like this look and I may do the same thing with grandma. Uh, they really look good from behind. The overall condition of this car is not too bad. There's a little bit of scale where this vehicle was undercoated at one point in time. Um, and then you've got some places like these straps here which are quite seedy. Uh, but the whole structure of the car is, is in really good shape. It's in decent shape for the year of the car and the mileage. And uh, all we're going to do today is we're going to be basically taking a look at the suspension, which I've already gone over and checked and everything seems to be okay. But the only major concern that we're going to tackle today is the brakes. I noticed that, uh, you know, I've been driving this thing for a week now and I've been picking it apart, little tiny things, nothing major. And one of those things was the pedal felt really spongy. And if you guys have ever stepped on the brake and you really kind of got to mush onto it to get it to do anything, well, I'm going to explain to you guys why these things or any vehicle will do that. Let's get this car lowered down a bit and we'll take a look. So here's another good example of uh, rotors that are rusty and uh, you can see where the mating surface of the wheel was. This is the front wheel and again we've got some discoloration there where there's been some uh, corrosion happening there. So what I want to point out to you is uh, on brakes there are moving parts. You've got the pistons on this one as a dual caliper. You've also got your caliper slides which are these things right here and this is what allows your caliper to move as the pistons move and as your brake pads wear down. You always want to make sure that these have movement and that they're moving freely because if not they're going to keep pressure on your brake pads and, and wear them down prematurely. This one here everything seems to be pretty good but I did notice that on this when you take these brakes apart this one here has been proven pretty difficult to get the pads out of their little uh, locking space here. And if we come down to the bottom, you'll see right here, there's not a lick of lubrication on that stainless steel clip. These brake pads have to move inside those stainless steel clips as they wear. And as that caliper compresses and retracts, they've got to be able to slide and move around a little bit. When you don't lubricate those stainless steel clips, those pads generally don't move very much. So when the caliper squeezes on them to slow your car down, sometimes it doesn't let go as quickly. Even though the caliper may be letting go, the pads may be stuck in place. Again, premature wear, and I think that's what the case is here. So we're gonna get those pads out of there, and I'll show you what those slides and those clips look like inside the caliper bracket. So as we take a look at these pads, they're not in too bad a shape. This one here on the outside is about half worn. And as we get over to the inside pad, it's more like three quarters worn uh, to the point where I'm going to end up replacing the pads on the front here. But we like to recommend that you have your brakes serviced at least once a season uh, to make sure that you're not prematurely wearing your pads down. Uh, this one doesn't look like it's uh, seen any servicing in a long, long time. In fact, when I went to take these bolts out, they were coming out pretty hard. So that tells me they haven't been apart in a while. I'm very surprised that um, these slides here are moving freely, but again, they are. We're going to take these out and we're going to actually replace these stainless steel clips because they're going to come new with the new pads. So here's the new pads and there's the new stainless steel clips. And we've got these brand new Wherever Gold pads from CarQuest. And these are ceramic, so they're like an OEM replacement for the vehicle. So I'm not going to bore you with putting the 
pads back on here and doing all this service work is pretty standard stuff. We're going to clean these up with a file and put those new stainless steel clips in there and use some brake lube uh, to put everything back together. As we come around to the back, one of the designs on these Panther platforms is that the caliper is up front. So it's getting any slush and salt and crap that may be coming off the back of the front and it's coming up here and it will tend to rust these out fairly quick. Also, these run a little bit of a different setup where the slide, the stainless steel clip is just a little bar that fits on this uh, bracket here. One thing I noticed is that when I pulled the bolts out that hold the caliper in, there's some copper anti-seize on there. So somebody has done that somewhere along the way. These bolts actually came out fairly easy. What we're gonna have to do is take this off. We're gonna clean this surface up here as well as the pads. And the pads still look pretty good and those rotors look like they were probably replaced not that long ago. Despite the fact that they're rusty, they're smooth and there's no big flakes or chunks hanging off them. So we're gonna service the front and the rear brakes. And then we're going to get this thing up in the air while it's running and check and see where that leak on the oil up front may be coming from. So I wanted to just kind of give you guys an idea of what we do when uh, we service a car that we've either taken on trade or that we've recently bought. And uh, having said that, a few videos ago I had mentioned to you guys about the Kia Sorento that we had troubles with and that we had to do an arbitration on at the auction and you guys were some of some of you guys were curious as to what happened well they came good for four hundred dollars of the eight hundred dollar repair that was needed to fix the four-wheel drive on that vehicle we've got it out on the lot now it's all cleaned up and it's ready to roll so sometimes it is about the squeaky wheel getting the grease but also it's about standing up for what you believe is right and between the seller the auction and myself we came to an agreement and we both basically paid half of the repair so sometimes it's a give and take but nevertheless i know a lot of you guys had suggested that i cancel that sale <laughs> i didn't uh, i was a little bit pers persistent to uh, try and get something uh, to happen there we did get a good buy or at least a decent buy on it when i bought it i didn't want to pass that up and if i could have gotten a little bit of help on the repair that's what was going to make me happy i just want people to be kind and you know at least pretend like they want to look after you. So we got everything resolved and the car is on the lot and ready for sale. All right, so we've got our brakes serviced all the way around. We're getting ready to put the wheels back on, but before we do that, I wanna show you guys what we did. So we've got the surface of the rotor cleaned up as well as we've got our new stainless steel clips installed and uh, lubricated. We got brand new pads in there as well. We also lubricated these pins. We pulled them out and put some of that brake lube on there as well. And we come around back and we've got the uh, stainless steel clips here on the brake bracket on the back done, as well as we lubed up our pins on the back side and cleaned up the sides of our pads. The pads were in good shape. Once we had that off, we also cleaned up the surface, the mating surface of this rotor, as well as the mating surface of the rim. And what we use for that is just these little right angled air grinders uh, with the R lock on the end of it. So we're all done with the service end of it. We're now going to get it up in the air running and see if we can find out where that leak is coming from. Well, so far I don't see anything out of the ordinary that's causing anything to leak. I don't see anything leaking, but we do have this fitting right here. That is just a little bracket that holds the power sear cooler line in place. And it looks like it might be a little bit rusty inside there. So it could be just taping a little bit. I don't know, I really can't see anything at this point. Nothing that jumps right out at me anyway. So what we're gonna have to do is just kind of keep our eyes on the uh, fluid levels, make sure that nothing's going down and if it does, well, we'll have a better idea on where to look. Transmission fluid was up, engine oil was down a little bit. I did have to top that up the other day. I put about 125 miles on and uh, it was down a little bit after that. So uh, I do see some spots where it's dripping in the driveway. And when I had it in here in the garage, there was a spot there, it's a little tiny drip. So we know it is leaking from somewhere. We'll have to keep our eye on things. Anyway, I told you guys we were going to prove that this thing only has an open differential. So let's get her backed out and see if she'll do a burnout. So for those of you who don't know, on these Panther platforms, if you're running an open diff, 
the right rear tire is your drive tire. So if you're doing a burnout, that's the one that's going to smoke, not this one. If you've got a track lock, both of them will light up and smoke the tires. So let's see what this thing's got. traction control off. only a one wheel peeler something tells me we're gonna have to fix that you guys know how it's done because we just did it on grandma we're gonna be on the hunt for a track lock 327 maybe a 355 for this sucker remember we're gonna be jacking it up put some big tires on it we may not want to go that far but nevertheless we want both of those rear tires spinning Well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I'm going to go inside and get my hands cleaned up and get ready to go home for some supper. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial or a little play-by-play uh, -play on what exactly we do to our used cars. Uh, we go through the brakes, we check the front end, we check the tires. Uh, we do all that stuff as I've done in previous videos before. You guys are going to want to stay tuned because Old Blackjack is going to be getting some upgrades here in the near future. I've got some tires showing up. I've also got the lift kit showing up. And yes, we are putting a donk lift kit on Blackjack. And uh, the only difference is, is we're not going with 24s. We're going with 15, sorry. We're not going with 24s. We're going with 16 inch tires, 31 inches tall. And uh, my buddy Dustin, who is my tire rep, one of my tire reps is uh, been gracious enough to give me a really good deal on some 31 inch tires. Maybe in the next video or two, we'll be lifting old Blackjack and we will be transforming him into a mega machine. I've only seen this in pictures. I've seen a few videos. I've seen the Gambler 500 and some guys are running these things all jacked up and man, don't they look mean. We're gonna do it to this one. Hope you guys stick around for it. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so now to help me get to 5,000 subscribers. 